Well, hello and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, for those of you who have not met me, my name is Grant Walters. I'm the Director of Educational Programs here at the Akuhawai Central Office in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, as usual, we're very pleased to be partnering with our friends um, from House of Shine and from uh, various aspects of higher education who have helped us to compose BASIC. Um, and uh, we have good partners here who are uh, guesting on our webinar this afternoon. We're going to talk a little bit more about leadership development models and community building and how campuses can use that um, through their basic model as well. Um, so the webinar this afternoon is uh, designed to provide you with uh, several skills um, in applying using the basic uh, modules that we sell in our bookstore online at our website, akuho-aya.org. Uh, just so you know, the basic uh, module is our best-selling publication in the Akuhoi bookstore. So we're always very happy uh, to work with our partners, um, and we're really thankful that they've given us um, such great partnership in developing a useful educational tool for our member institutions. So thank you all for doing that. Um, with the webinar this afternoon, I want to welcome our three presenters. Uh, first of all, we have Katie Kolkmeyer and Dean Masternardi Bizet, uh, both who work with us on the basic module. Uh, we also like to welcome Katie Kidwell, who is uh, from Simmons University, and she's going to be joining um, as a user um, from one of our institutions that uses the basic module on a regular basis. So the three of them um, are going to be on the webinar this afternoon to present content and also answer any questions you might have uh, at the close of the webinar. Um, we're going to, uh, you can submit questions uh, to us. Uh, you can either raise your hand or you can submit a question through uh, the chat box um, on the module uh, for the webinar. Uh, so if you have questions as you go, that's great. Uh, we'll try to keep most of them till the end if that's okay. Um, we're also recording the webinar this afternoon. So if you have colleagues or if you'd like to access the webinar after we're finished this afternoon with the broadcast, you can access that on the website and we'll tell you how to do that uh, near the end. Uh, so for now, I'd like our presenters uh, to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about what they do, and uh, we'll get everything started. Thank you, Grant. Hi, everybody. This is Dee Mastronari Facet. Um, I, uh, along with um, Katie Kolkmeyer and Claudia Beanie, um, we a few years ago got together and revamped um, a little bit of BASIC. Um, that was the original BASIC that was designed over 20 years ago. So I think Katie will get into a little bit of that, but. Um, just some background on me. Um, I did my undergrad at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. Um, I did my master's degree at Northeastern University in college student development and counseling. Um, I worked for several years around the Boston area in different residence life roles um, before I moved out to LA um, just a couple of years ago where I now work um, at Pepperdine University. Um, here in Malibu um, in student engagement. So I manage all of the prospective student engagement for the Gracidio Business School. So thank you for joining today. Um, uh, I'd like to kick it over to Katie Kidwell. She is, um, to introduce herself a little bit, um, she is has been our biggest advocate, one of our um, most amazing supervisors that has um, used BASIC um, for the last four years. So Katie. Awesome. Thanks, Dee. Yeah, so like Dee said, my name is Katie Kidwell. I'm currently working uh, as an area coordinator here at Simmons University, and I've been here for about eight weeks uh, enjoying this role. Previously, uh, I went to undergrad at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and I have my master's in higher ed from the University of Iowa. And then I've been in Boston for the last seven years working in various res life roles um, at Northeastern and at Massachusetts College of Art and Design, and it's at MassArt where we connected with Dee and implemented BASIC um, there for the last three years. Um, so I'll be very excited to talk more about that um, and what that means as a supervisor. Awesome, and hello everybody. My name is Katie Kolkmeyer. I started and really lived out my entire higher education experience in the CEHO region. I did my undergraduate work at Bellarmine University in Louisville, Kentucky. We're starting my freshman year. I was a student worker through the Federal Employment Program. Uh, They're working in the Residence Life Office, answering the phone calls uh, from parents and students that were coming in, became a resident assistant and a peer mentor in my time there then went on to graduate school at James Madison University in Virginia, where I served as a hall director for two years and also was getting my master's of education in their college student personnel program. 
And then I spent uh, quite a bit of time working at both the University of North Carolina Wilmington and Florida State University. And my time there uh, served as both a residence coordinator and then eventually an assistant director uh, with direct responsibility over training and recruitment. Um, I have since left the field formally of higher education and now work for a nonprofit called House of Shine based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas. And really what we do um, is help prepare students for that higher education experience. So we work with students kindergarten through 12th grade, helping to develop their character, develop their leadership skills as they then prepare to head off into the career field or into their college experience. So we're all very excited to be here with you today to share more about BASIC, what it is, and how it can actually impact the supervisor who is facilitating the BASIC model for their student staff members. So Grant, can we switch it over so I can share my screen? Yeah, I just I shared mine. So you should be able to click the green box with the arrow at the bottom. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. Very good. So the first thing that we wanted to share with you all is that you may or may not be aware that BASIC is actually something that has been available um, and has been in use since the 1990s. And as Grant mentioned, it has been, you know, offered through Akuhuai and all of that time and actually has one of been one of their best selling publications. And so the publication that was written in the 90s was very focused on community development. It really was a journal created for resident assistants, for community assistants, the student staff responsible for developing community on college campuses. And it was kind of a, line a linear community development model beginning on day one of RA training all the way through the day that their residents moved off of campus. And it walked students through kind of on a quarterly basis, the steps that were required in order to develop a strong involving community for their community of residents in their hall, on their wing, whatever the style of their community was. And then in 2017, we actually, uh, the team got together, Claudia Beanie, who was one of the original authors, as well as Dee and myself, got together to create an updated version of that original basic model. And when we did that, we decided that yes, we still believe that community development was important, and it actually is vital to the work that is being done in residence life, housing and residence life across the states and really internationally. But we also decided that we thought more so the emphasis needed to be placed on how to develop leadership in those student staff members. Therefore, believing that if you developed a strong leader, community would be a natural byproduct of that. So if I could develop a strong leader who is in charge of a community of people through their leadership development and through their leadership skills, a strong involving community would emerge as a part of that strong leadership. And so what is now available for purchase through Okuhuai is that updated basic version that really has leadership development as the focus of the curriculum. The entire model is built around how to build a leader, how to develop leadership skills in those student staff members. And so we know as higher education professionals, those working in student affairs, that developing leaders, not only leaders there on your college campus, but also leaders who are future citizens of the world, is really ultimately what our job as higher education professionals is all about. How do we prepare students to leave our campuses and then go out into the world and lead in whatever corner of the world it is that they're heading out to. And so we developed this model so that any residence life student employee experience for resident assistants, community assistants, would be explicitly teaching them those leadership skills that they need in order to be able to do that. But we also know that leadership development is something that requires ongoing interactions. That's really what that supervisor, supervisor, supervisee relationship is all about, is that ongoing interaction, that continuous feedback, the involvement of the supervisor in order to be developing that student as a leader. And so the biggest shift that we made, in addition from going to community development to leadership development, was that the updated model that was released in 2017 also included for the first time a supervisor's guide. So an accompanying document so specifically created for the supervisor to walk them through a process of how to develop leadership in their student staff members, how to walk their students through this basic experience and supervise them in the process. And that really and truly is our focus for today's webinar. 
that of the supervisor. We want to talk to you about what BASIC is. We're going to give you a general overview of what is BASIC. Some of you might already have it in your possession, might have already maybe been to a workshop at a conference about BASIC. Um, but in case you haven't, we will do a general overview of what is BASIC. But we want to spend some in-depth time walking you through the supervisor's guide so that you actually can see what is in that document and what is the purpose of that document. How is it intended to be a tool and a resource for you? We also want to talk to you about what are the specific benefits of BASIC for you as a supervisor? How can it impact or how can it benefit and help the work that you are doing as a supervisor on a daily basis? And that includes how it can impact your own personal, professional, and leadership development. But before we begin, I just want to pause for a few seconds and I want to talk to you about your role as a supervisor and I want to have you kind of reflect on and think about something before we dig in. And what I want you to pause and think about is I want you to identify who is a student, a student staff member of yours, or if you oversee professional staff or graduate student staff, I want you to pick out one of your staff members. I want you to picture them in your head and I want you to be picturing what is it about them that you might currently need to have a conversation with them about, but you're just not sure to ha how to have it. Or maybe it's a staff member that just isn't clicking with their community and you just are left struggling and wondering, how can I help this process? Or it might be that they're not really melding with the rest, meshing and melding with the rest of your team that you've created. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna pause for about 15 seconds and I just want each of you to, in your mind, think about who is that staff member that you can think about as we go, go through the remainder of our webinar today. Okay, so as we do that and as we jump in, I also, so I told you I don't work in residence life anymore, um, but I still many days feel like they feel as though they were just yesterday. So even as I am going through today's webinar, in my mind and some of the examples that I'm going to share with you, I am going to be in my mind thinking about a staff member of mine named Jordan, whose name I have changed just in case there are some former colleagues of mine out there. Uh, but I'm going to reference Jordan throughout the webinar and you will get to know what our relationship was about and how BASIC would have helped me as a supervisor in my relationship with Jordan, and I hope you have picked out one of your staff members as well. So the first thing that we really wanna start with is we know that you are higher education professionals, uh, and so it matters to you, it is important to you, to understand the theoretical backdrop or the theoretical underpinnings through which BASIC was created. Because certainly we don't want you to think we just kind of sat around a table with the three of us and thought about, well, what do we think is important about leadership development? Or what do we think is important that supervisors should be doing? We really and truly tried to look at some theory across fields, both within higher education, in the business world, in the nonprofit sector, looking at what are some major theories and some um, studies and research that is out there about leadership development of of leaders, the development of leaders, and how can we weave it into the basic model. So the first is actually um, from 1936, which I just have to say feels pretty tried and true. If all these years later, almost let's say 85 years later, we are still talking about this theory. And it is from uh, a behavioral psychologist by the name of Kurt Lewin. And what Kurt was looking at was behavior and trying to understand how is it that we change behavior in humans. What does it take in order to be able to impact or influence someone's behavior? And through his research, he determined that the behavior that we see from people is a function of who they are as a person times the environment that they are in. So someone's behavior, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, is driven by who they are as a person and the environment that they are in. So we as supervisors know that there is a large number of behaviors that we are looking for from our staff members. On a day-to-day -day basis, I was evaluating, am I seeing the behavior I want to see from my staff member or am I not? And that could be both in their role as a resident assistant, but it also could be, am I seeing the behavior that I need to see from them academically in order to stay in their position? Am I seeing the behavior from them that I want to see as it relates to the relationships? That they're building. So there are a number of behaviors as a supervisor that we want to see. And so it's important for us to think about, well, 
what do we do? How do we influence these behaviors that we're seeing, whether we like them or whether we would like to see them change? And so according to Lewin's research, the way that we do that is by looking at who they are as a person and the environment that they are in. Fortunately or unfortunately, there's not a whole lot we can do about the P, about the person. They are who they are, they're wired to be who they're wired to be, and we might have some minor influence in that over time. Certainly we hope the leadership development experience they will have in, through BASIC will impact who they are as a person, but really where you as a supervisor can have the greatest impact is in the environment that you are creating for them. And we believe that BASIC really drives at that environment piece. It creates an environment in which leadership development is explicitly happening. And by doing so, who they are as a person, experiencing that environment of leadership development will therefore impact the behavior that we are seeing from them as a leader in our residential communities. So that's really the first theoretical underpinning that we were driving at. The second actually comes from the business world. It's from an author named Daniel Pink, and he was really studying and researching where does motivation come from? How do we motivate employees? How do we drive people to want to do something? And he identified three components that can impact an individual's motivation. The first was autonomy, their ability to feel ownership over what it is that they're doing. The second is mastery, which is to say in that ownership that they feel, are they given opportunity to master skills and traits that they want to acquire? And the third is purpose. Do they see a greater purpose to what it is that they are doing? We believe that BASIC addresses all three of these components of motivation. Autonomy in that a part, an integral part of the basic model is that each week or every other week, depending on how the supervisor decides to facilitate it, staff members will be given the opportunity to complete a leadership challenge through a challenge card included in the basic model. This is the way that we explicitly teach these different leadership skills. In doing so, all staff members will complete the same challenge. However, their autonomy will come from the way that they individually have the ownership to then go implement that challenge in their community. Whether it's something they then are challenged to go and do with a resident of theirs, whether it's something they're challenged to go and do with their entire community of residents, they have the autonomy to go out into their community and to implement to put into practice whatever that leadership challenge is for that week. They have mastery over their leadership development. They are developing mastery through that leadership development each week as they are accumulating all of these different leadership-based activities that they are building on and developing these schools, these skills, they are mastering that leadership development. And the purpose is that we really want them to see how this experience as a leader in a residential community has a connection and a greater purpose as it relates to their life after college. Dee in a little bit is gonna walk us through the supervisor's guide. And as a part of that, she will show you and talk to you about how we have on purpose put information into that supervisor's guide to help you make that connection of how what they're learning now can transfer into their future life in the workplace beyond just their college experience. And the third kind of body of knowledge or theory um, that we really looked into is called involvement and in learning. This study was looking at what does it take? What factors have to be in place in order for learning to take place, both learning in the classroom as well as learning outside of the classroom. And the three factors that they found that impacted learning, impacted a student's ability to learn, to have a meaningful learning experience, was high expectations from the supervisor in the role of basic, involvement, the student's ability to be involved in the process, as well as feedback. Again, we modeled the basic leadership development model around these three factors. As we walk through the basic model, as Dee walks you through the supervisor's guide, you will see that there are a number of high expectations that are placed on student staff members through their participation in basic. They are heavily involved in the process, as I've already told you, through their, or their weekly leadership challenges that they're completing. 
And then the third piece is feedback, which again, Dee is gonna go into more detail about, but there are several opportunities, which we refer to as supervisor touch points, for you to be providing feedback about their experience with BASIC through the interactions you're already having with them as a supervisor. We believe that one of kind of the prizes inside about BASIC is that it actually creates sort of a non-threatening, neutralized way for you to be able to provide feedback that you maybe otherwise would have been left struggling and trying to figure out, how am I gonna give this piece of feedback without it seeming like it's coming out of nowhere? Or without me being left wondering, how in the world am I supposed to bring this up in a conversation? We believe and we have seen that through BASIC, there are natural, ongoing, regular pieces of feedback that can be given through the different touch points that are built into the model itself. So with that, now that you have an understanding of what it is that we were trying to create and why it is that we were trying to create it, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dee so that she actually can walk you through what the model is and as well as what is in the supervisor's guide. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, we have three major parts of the model of BASIC. That includes our six-step model that you're looking at right now, um, the challenge cards, and then your brand you portfolio. So I want to make sure before I dive into actually what's a part of the supervisor's guide, we, we talk about the model that, um, you know, 20 plus years ago, Claudia and our colleague George came up with. Um, and, and I do want to preface this. I, I'm going to talk through this model. Um, I'm not going to to spend a ton of time on it because as you're going to read through it, you're probably going to sit there and say, D, like, duh, we do those things. We know it. Um, but the point of showing you this model and walking through it is to make sure we're really being intentional about our actions and we're being cognizant of how we are going about creating community and how we're going about interacting with our residents on our floors. Um, so the first step in the model is knowing names, just basic things. You know, have you ever, have you ever met somebody and then you meet them again and they, re, you know, they shake your hand, they say, Hey Katie, it's so great to meet you. How great does it feel when someone actually remembers your name? So we're saying knowing names is so important for you as a supervisor, you, um, you to be teaching your resident assistants to be making sure that they're actually getting to know their residents and knowing their names. They're able to reach out to them directly. Um, the next part of the model is stacking conversations. So as RAs are meeting their new residents, they're saying, okay, great. Katie does this and D does this and um, that's a hobby of theirs. That's an interest of theirs. So they're stacking that information as they're knowing names and meeting their residents. The next part is mapping assets and dis discovering desired experiences and accomplishments. So again, as you are stacking these conversations, you're, you're learning more about the residents and the community members that you have. You are, are mapping ways in which that you can connect those residents to one another. You're learning what they want to, you know, they're desiring to um, obtain. Um, and then you're, you're connecting, the, you're helping them to connect those dots, which flows in to our step four, identify and making matches. So you're actually going about, okay, I remember that um, Katie uh, in room 203 really likes horseback riding and uh, George down the hall also really likes horseback riding. You know, let me make sure that I form some sort of connection there and making sure that they are uh, talking with one another so that they're able to see that there's commonalities between the two of them. Um, and then the next two steps, tapping assets and filling gaps. So if there are um, resources around your community that can help you tap those assets, I need to know more about horseback riding. Um, you're able to go out and help fulfill those gaps and, um, and support your resident assistants. And they're, they're able to support themselves and their community members. In, um, in the process of helping to build the community. So that's a really quick and dirty um, walkthrough of what our model is. And again, I know it's probably very intuitive and it's very, very much like, yeah, we know we're doing that, but it's really the idea of making sure that you're being so keen and acutely aware of what you're doing and how you're doing it to help to build community. We can go to the next slide, Katie. 
So here we go. This is the supervisor's guide. Um, you know, obviously I wish that we were in person and I was able to give you a supervisor's guide. So you're able to touch and feel it and look at it and, and read through it. So you can really see the immense amount of amazing information that we've been able to compile into it. Um, when you, if you do have the guides already, or if you um, are planning on um, purchasing the guides, you'll notice that the supervisor's guide is absolutely double the size of the resident assistant guide. And there's good reason to that for, um, you know, and a lot of the things that Katie was talking about. We want to make sure that supervisors are completely equipped to help guide and support the resident assistants as they're walking through basic. So the contents of the of the guide and, and you know, I don't want to dig through each one of these lines here, but I really want to make sure I'm hitting on a few things that I find to be very, very important. Um, and, and kind of skipping down here right to the to the internship. What we really like to say about basic is that basic is an internship in leadership. It is the perfect way to learn about leadership and help build those skills that future employers are looking for. Um, so we really talk about what employers are seeking, what um, the real world, real skills that um, they're saying that they're needed. Um, we have a quote in the book that says, employers responding to the National Association of Colleges Employers, which is NACE, um, they said the ability to work in a team structure, ability to make decisions and solve problems, ability to plan, organize, and prioritize work, and ability to verbally communicate with persons inside and outside of the organizations are the most important candidate skills and qualities. Aren't those things that your resident assistants are doing every single day? I think so. So we want to help build those skills as much as possible so that those students are able to go out into the workforce so capable and so ready to fulfill those desires of future employers. Um, we, we also say the brand called you. So um, there, we, we really want RAs to be building their own brand. An article from uh, Fast Company Magazine outlined how important it is, regardless of your position, regardless of the business you're in, that you understand the importance of branding yourself. The RA job allows your students to develop their brand that is reflective of their unique talents, skills, and leadership styles. Um, so then we, the supervisor guide really digs into the model more. It gives you a lot of the content that um, uh, Katie was talking about before, and then we really get into um, the implementation the and the supervision, which is really the meat of the book. Um, it talks through the three elements that I mentioned previously, the six F model, the challenge cards, the brand new portfolio. Um, and then we talk into, we, we get into really the implementation and how to get the most out of basic. Um, and, and what we have said is the four simple things to remember when, what to do when you're implementing basic is to embrace a continuum. There's always going to be a varying degree of interest um, that your, your community members have. You know, they, some of them might be super engaged. Some of them really might not uh, want to engage in the events that you have going on your, in, within your halls. So the RA should really experiment to see what works with all, all types of students that they have in their halls. The next one is to tune into technology, you know, making sure that you're, you're following your college or universities, um, proper technology um, uh, uh, codes and um, requirements. Um, the third one is creating your rituals. Um, we all know, and we actually created a specific challenge card around rituals um, because we know when you're implementing amazing rituals, community is really built with, with just something as simple as that. Um, and then the last thing too we wanna remember is be an architect of, ac of academic success. That's why the students are there at the end of the day. Um, you know, it is an amazing opportunity to live in a residence hall, to be building community, to build building engagement and leadership skills. But you also wanna remember that we need to be providing them the proper support for their academic engagements. Um, within the, the book, we talk about using basic in your summer and winter trainings, kicking off a new semester, and then what to do when you have new hires. Um, 
and and then the last thing I want to make sure I say is that there we and Katie kind of um, spoke about this a little bit um, was we identified these five touch points that you all as supervisors may may have some or if not all of with your RAs um, and those five touch points are the summer and winter trainings weekly staff meetings one on ones weekly reports and end of the year evaluations. So what we've really done within the supervisor's guide is giving you examples, resources on how to support your, your RAs in each of those different touch points. So we basically break down summer and winter trainings, weekly staff meetings, one-on-ones, weekly reports, end of the year evaluations for our three major parts of our model, which again are the stick step model, the challenge cards, and brand new portfolio. Um, it, through the guide, we really um, give you solid examples um, to help support you by supporting your staff members. Um, so it is, um, I like to use the word, it's a treasure tro trove of information that, um, you know, if you are a newer supervisor, um, it really can help you to build your supervisory skills and give you a baseline so that you're not recreating the wheel every single time with a new staff or a new staff member. So, and um, here's, here's an example of um, one of those touch points um, or one of the um, pieces of our model in the touch points. So um, we lay out here in summer and winter trainings, here are things that you should be doing. Familiar, familiarize yourself with the actual basic cards. So um, we have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, we have, we have 45 challenge cards at this point. Mm -hmm. And we just did a um, upgrade to the challenge cards. Um, so as a supervisor, you should go through, um, read through the cards um, before you'll be implementing it in the new year. Um, selecting your weekly challenge card. I know Katie um, Kidwell, um, I, we, I, I believe she'll be talking about this potentially um, at the latter end of our webinar here, but um, we want you all to be in the driver's, guy, driver's seat for when you're selecting your challenge cards. Um, you know, moving on the next part, weekly staff meetings, um, we suggest maybe doing something like a high, low, aha. So you're going around, you're talking about the high moments, low moments, and aha moments of the week when you're dealing with, um, your challenge cards. Um, so we talk about social media and, um, challenging your staff again, tuning into technology to make sure that, um, you're doing everything, um, in accordance with your university's policies. Um, and then jumping back down to uh, one-on-ones. So giving you examples of maybe change up your meeting location, um, using open-ended questions, um, and then making sure that you're finding a way to recognize your staff members with the challenge cards. So um, humility here is actually my favorite card that we have in the entire deck, I think. Um, we use this card a lot when we're doing our presentations and our trainings. Um, it talks about Nelson Mandela, just to, to give you a brief little overview, and how Nelson Mandela really teaches us a lot about uh, humility. So this particular challenge cards, um, for that, you know, if you chose that challenge card for the week, would you would have your staff member talk about someone that has impacted them. You have your staff um, write that down on a post-it note, you have them talk about it, um, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, but for that week, they really reflect upon somebody that has created a significant impact to where they've, where they have, um, landed today. Um, so then in the supervisor's guide, um, you will see here on the right side, we break down the challenge card a little bit more. So we, we reiterate what the card is about. We talk about what the challenge is going to be. For you as a supervisor, we, we list out what the learning objective for that card should be. We then list out what the transferability to the workplace should be. We list out introductory facilitator tips for you. So this, again, we're really providing you with a platform in order to then talk about the challenge cards at your next staff meeting. And then we talk about, we, we give you follow-up reflection questions. So we are really trying to help build you all as supervisors um, and being able to give you an opportunity to really lead these conversations in a really intentional way. 
Awesome. So with that being said, uh, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to walk us through. We see a lot of benefits to supervisors through this basic model, but I'm going to share with you three specific benefits that we see that basic has for you as a supervisor. So certainly, hopefully you are coming to understand what the benefit to your students is in this basic model, but we really want to point out to you, what are the benefits for you as a supervisor? Why should you care about this? Why should you want to invest in it? And then we're actually going to turn it over to Dee and Katie Kidwell, and you're going to get to hear from someone who has actually been a supervisor through the basic model to hear what she would say about the experience. So the first benefit that we as the basic writing team see is that it really provides for you as a supervisor a structured system or plan for your supervision. And I would say uh, that I think that appears in a number of different ways in the basic model. The first, Dee already shared with you the six step community development model. And while it was written within the basic model really for the resident assistant to be implementing with their residents, I would say that for you as a supervisor, it also creates a structured way, a structured plan for you to be able to develop, develop community among your staff team. You as the supervisor from the day they are moving in for the first day of RE training can begin knowing those names and stacking conversations and information about them, beginning to map what assets they can bring to the team as well as what experiences they are eager to have, how to identify and make matches between those assets and those desired experiences, and then how to make those matches happen and tap into the assets within your staff community. And so in the same way that we are looking for resident assistants to do this with their residents, I would say that the six step model uh, offers a structured plan, a structured system for you to be able to develop community among your own staff team. The other structured plans and systems I would say that it creates is when I was supervising RA staffs, I often, it was either weekly or every other week in my staff meetings, wanted to have some sort of staff development that I was bringing to the staff meeting. So that might have been around the topic of leadership, or it might have been something around how we could develop a more cohesive bond as a team. And BASIC provides that for you. Uh, I oftentimes, before a staff meeting, would find myself scrambling uh, either through resources I already had from graduate school or doing a quick Google search of what a hand on activity was that I could do. Instead, BASIC already lays it out for you, provides those challenges and experiences for you in a systematic ongoing way without you having to do a lot of work on the back end to try to pull that information together. I also would say that it can provide the department a way to specifically address in a structured way the learning outcomes of your student affairs division. You likely have outcomes that your department has been asked to meet in the way that you are employing student employees or in the services you are offering your students. And BASIC provides a systematic way for you to be able to address those learning outcomes as it relates to those that you are employing. I would say that in the same way that many campuses have developed either a programming model or a residential curriculum model of some way, those programming models and or those residential curriculum models really are intended to provide an experience for your residential students. I would say, we would say, that BASIC provides that for you as it relates to the development of your student staff members. So while your programming model or your residential curriculum model provides experiences and ongoing development for your residents, BASIC provides a structured system and plan for you to be able to do that with your student employees, with your resident assistants. The second benefit, um, which I mentioned earlier a little bit when I was talking about the feedback piece of the involvement and learning theory, is that we believe one of the benefits is that BASIC provides an invitation to you as a supervisor to quote unquote, bring it up which is to say that you have a piece of feedback in your mind that you know you need to give to a specific student staff member of yours. And BASIC can provide that avenue or that invitation for you to bring it up in a non-threatening, neutralized way that isn't going to seem out of nowhere from your student staff members. The example I will give you, um, earlier I mentioned my former student staff member, Jordan, and it was around January, so this time of the year, when we had just gotten mid-semester feedback from Jordan's residence. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback that we were hearing from Jordan's residence is that he wasn't present 
in the community. His residents didn't really know him. They felt like they never saw him. He wasn't an integral part to the community. So instead of me trying to find a way to bring that up to Jordan or for him to feel caught off guard by his residents saying that, instead, the humility card is an example of how I might have been able to bring that up to Jordan in a sort of neutralized, non-threatening way by talking about the basic process. So as Dee mentioned, the humility card invites resident assistants to develop a list of the people who have impacted their journey to becoming a resident assistant, who has had an influence on your life. So in an upcoming one-on-one -on -one with Jordan, I could have talked to him about who it was that he wrote on his post-it notes and what role they played in his life and how, they, how he saw their impact on his journey to becoming a resident assistant. And then I could have flipped it around to ask Jordan, well, who do you think your residents would write down if they were doing this activity? If they were having to think about who it is that's impacted their journey in life so far, who do you think they would write down on their post-it notes? And do you think they would write down your name on one of those post-it notes. And why do you think that is, or why do you think they wouldn't write down your name? Which again, just provides a very natural, very cohesive way for me to address this feedback that I need to give Jordan, which is that I don't think your residents would write you down because they're telling me through their feedback that they don't even feel like they know you and they're not seeing you, but is doing it in a way that is in keeping with what Jordan is already thinking about and giving his energy to, which would be the humility card. And the third benefit that we see, third of many benefits that we see to the supervisor is that it also provides an opportunity to impact your own leadership development. So certainly the basic model is meant to develop that of your student staff members and to help you supervise their leadership development. But assuming you engage with the process, which we would encourage you to do, it also can impact your own leadership development in a lot of ways, but I'm gonna mention two. One is that, Dee mentioned in the supervisor's guide, one of the things that we provide for you is the introductory facilitator tips or conversation pieces for you as the supervisor to share with your staff members when you are introducing each of the challenge cards. And by doing that, it's going to ask you to reflect on your own leadership development process and to provide examples to your student staff members of your own leadership development. So for example, risk taking, is another of the challenge cards that you'll see on the screen. And in the introductory facilitator tips for this challenge card, we ask the supervisors to share an example with their student staff members of when they took a risk, when it went well, and when it didn't go well. And by nature of that, you as the supervisor would be reflecting on your own experience, giving thought to, well, how have I taken a risk? And when did it go well? And when did it not? And what did I learn from those experiences. So it would impact your own development in that it would mandate um, or require reflection on your part. But the second is that you then would have the opportunity to complete the challenges as well. So for example, the challenge to students on this card is for them to identify what is a risk that they have been wanting to take, but they just haven't because it's outside of their comfort zone and they're too scared to do it? Is there someone on campus they've wanted to introduce themselves to? Is there a program or community building idea that they've had, but they're not sure if it would work, so they haven't done it because they're scared? In the same way, you as the supervisor could do the same thing. Is there someone that you've been wanting to ask to be your mentor, but you haven't done it out of fear? Is there um, is there a conference that you've wanted to present at, but you just have held back from submitting a program proposal? Or is there an article that's kind of in your mind that you would want to write, but you're, fear, you're fearful of it getting published? And so could you go ahead and take that risk to do it alongside of your student staff members while they are completing their risks as well? So with that being said, I want to make sure we leave enough time for Katie Kidwell to share about what benefits she has seen through BASIC as a supervisor, as well as just give her some time to talk about her experience in supervising the BASIC model. So I'm going to turn it over to Katie and Dee. Thank you, Katie. And hello, Katie Kidwell. Hi, Dee. Hi. Um, Thank you so much for being here today and all, you know, always being such a great advocate for, for basic. Um, just so everybody knows, I think she said it a little bit. I just want to reiterate, Katie was at mass art, um, in Boston, um, for, for what, three years, Katie. Um, yeah, a little over. 
and she just recently moved over to Simmons as uh, an area coordinator. Um, so congrats to her, great move. Um, and she is already um, hoping to get Simmons involved with BASIC, so we're obviously super excited about that. Um, Katie, a um, couple questions for you. Um, can you, can you, we, we thought it'd be really great to bring you in and, you know, hear it from the people who are actually using basic. So can you talk to us about, um, you know, just the, your overall experience with basic so far and how it has enhanced your supervisory skills? Yeah. So I had the pleasure of my first year at mass art was the first year that mass art implemented basic. So it was fun to, to come into a new school and then enjoy like this new development model. Um, and it's interesting at first when when I got there the RAs were a little resistant to this idea of like quote unquote more work. Um, and so I think it was really uh, interesting to be able to work with them to help understand I think you mentioned earlier just how like foundational the basic model is to what they're already doing. It just provides some language and some structure to some pre existing skills. And so one way we were working to get buy in with the residents is all of the residence hall directors also participated in basic as well. So um, to Katie's point, I did my own um, portfolio as part of the first year and got to, you know, reflect in that way on my own experience. So I think one there was that actively engaging with the model as it is meant for students as well was really helpful. And I think that self reflection then in turn influenced my supervision. But also I think as a supervisor, I, I describe myself as like really relational and like really democratic. And I think using basic really helps with that approach. So I'm using this, I'm using basic to learn about my um, RAs, their interests and their aspirations and making the connections. And when I'm, you know, we're using the challenge cards, I'm asking them about um, you know, not just the skill itself, but also that implementation and the process of thinking about um, the way they went about attempting to implement in the card. And I think it's really important to ask RAs like the, the why and the how. And I think BASIC really helped me um, having supervised staff prior to coming to MassArt. I think BASIC gave me like a more formalized language. And if ever I, you know, wasn't sure where to go, where we're struggling connecting with a staff member, um, that basic kind of gave me something to, to fall back on. And even in the guide, I think you mentioned there's like some act, like if you're not sure what to say, you've got some ideas. And there's some, some facilitated questions which were helpful for me um, to be able to look at as I was considering, you know, how to engage with this with some of my students. Great, um, thank you. I, oh. If we can go back to something you did say, because I, I want to make sure we touch upon it, um, just the, the whole um, situation with your students having reservations. Um, I actually um, was there. Um, MassArt had asked me to come in and facilitate BASIC um, with their supervisors and their RAs. So I remember this clear as day as we're talking to them about it and the, you know, their eyes were getting bigger and saying, well, we already, you're already asking us to do all of these things. And now you're going to ask us to do this. And, you know, so it was like, I remember there was like a couple of tough conversations about, you know, really trying to get them to buy in. Um, and so, I, but I, you know, I was only there for what, two days, maybe. Um, Katie, like, can you can you talk to us about how you worked through those reservations and, um, you know, how you really did get them to to buy into the basic model and the the program? Yeah, I think the the first piece was like agreeing that we would do it too. Uh, in general, as a supervisor, I try not to ask my staffs to do things I wouldn't also feel comfortable doing, and so I put you know we had to put the money where the mouth is, and so I think part of it was showing them that we we would be doing it too, um, and that we would be doing it with them was helpful. And I think, you know, something I really like about basic is that it, it, it does allow for a lot of flexibility. So even though there is a, a structure and a model and a system, there's a lot of flexibility and implementation um, because it is so like human driven. And so another way that we um, kind of got some buy-in is we would pull our cards at our staff meeting and we would discuss as a staff, was this a one week card or a two week card? So basically saying like looking at the, the challenge, does this seem feasible to do in one week or two weeks and sort of allowing them some ownership. It goes back to that piece around autonomy, like allowing them to sort of decide what worked for them um, and what made sense and allowing them the time to feel like they could master that skill or to at least put a good faith effort into it. Um, 
And then the other piece was, it, you know, working at an art school, a portfolio has like a really specific, that word has a really specific connotation. So instead, we started calling it a compilation without changing literally thing, anything else about it. <laughs> and a simple language change helped make it more palatable. And then allowing them, I think that piece especially was something really fun for them to work on because again, they got to infuse their own like artistic skills and mediums um, to put that together to kind of create a comprehensive reflection. So it, you know, at the end of the year where there are some, some students who still were not about it, like for sure. Um, and we definitely got some converts and I think part of it became a, a, just a cultural change. And anytime there's change, you know, in, in our Res Life Department and many other student affairs divisions, like it's hard when you've always done it this way. But, um, you know, this fall, this was my fourth year at MassArt and it was a complete change. Like people were generally more excited about BASIC. And I think part of it is because they saw what it meant either as residents or for their own RA experience. Great, that's, that's wonderful to hear. Um... What, I mean, I think you may have touched on this a little bit, but like you yourself as a supervisor, um, what would you say to someone or, or to another hall director that might be concerned that implementing BASIC is more work than they're already doing? Because I mean, I remember when I was an RD, you know, you have to worry about, um, you know, all the operational things, keys, uh, you know, all of your judicial stuff. Like, can, can you talk, talk about your feelings about that? Yeah. So, I, yeah, I think, you know, for, at the start, it did maybe feel like more work or as I'm learning, you know, understanding the cards and reading through the guide and, and making sure that I had a, like a firm grasp of what the model was and what it meant. Um, but I also think for me, it was really helpful to, again, to have like something to sort of latch on to. Um, and it eventually became interwoven into just what we did. So we talked about basic, it became a part, like every one-on-one -on -one I'm asking some similar questions, like how are classes going? Um, how's your floor? You know, kind of checking in with my staff. And so basic, asking about basic just became another piece of that one-on-one. -on -one. It was just another part. Um, I, you know, folks can add it in week, weekly reports. So kind of weaving it into the pre-existing fabric was helpful. Um, in addition to talking about it at staff meetings and then we also put it in our RA rehiring process. So having returning RAs bringing their compilation or their portfolio in progress to come and um, talk about it. So yeah, I think with anything new, it, it took a while to sort of like fully understand the pieces and make sure that I, you know, was doing my best to facilitate it. But with anything, I think it actually, the longer we did it, the, the more useful it became. And I think really helped undergird a lot of what we were already doing. Um, and provided, I think, some more tangible language around it. I think many students know they want to be an RA, like they want to be a leader, and sometimes have a hard time articulating what that means or looks like. And the nice thing about BASIC is it, it gave them something tangible to explain um, and to clarify the skills. And I, I think it does the same for supervisors as well. And it, yes, it will take, I think, a little investment up front, but ends up being like well worth the time and becomes part of, of the routine of what you're doing um, in the halls. Mm -hmm. Great. That's awesome. Um, my last question for you is, can you just maybe discuss a little bit about how BASIC has impacted, not only had mass art, you know, you said they, they're going on their fourth year of using it, um, but also yourself as a supervisor, you know, what have you gained from it yourself? Yeah, I think for me, you know, the, I hadn't necessarily directly considered that feedback piece and hearing Katie talk about that today. I was like, oh, definitely. I think um, for some supervisors, and I think especially new professionals, it can be really challenging to go from being in that student leadership role to being in a position that requires accountability. Um, and I think because, you know, basic was something that came up every week, it was a chance to push my students to reflect more deeply than I may have been able to do on my own at that point in my career. Like, I, yes, I always thought I was asking great questions and like getting to know them. Um, but, you know, seeing some of the questions in the book and um, having a, a really specific, like another piece um, of what they're doing that's just related to leadership development, like helped me start to develop, I think, some of those like facilitation skills, um, both like in the group, but also one on one encouraging some of that self reflection. Um, and it was, you know, and then as I got, you know, deeper into it in my supervision, I'd like to think strengthened and became um, 
you know, developed into my own style, then basic would kind of help undergird some of what I was already doing and kind of was like a refresh every year because even, you know, this year, one of my RAs, he was like, this is my third year doing basic, like we're doing it again. And he's like, I've never gotten this card. <laughs> or he's like, this card meant something very different from, for me last year. Um, and so it was interesting, even as a third year RA to see his changes within the card. Um, and I, I feel like that was similar as a supervisor. It just gave me, yeah, better skills, um, and better language around how to ask really meaningful questions about the how and the why. Um, and it felt a little less checkboxy than like, all right, we're talking about your program and we're talking about the buying and um, why you're doing it. And yes, some supervisors ask really great questions around that. And for me, this sort of helped me like level it up a little bit um, in what were already good conversations to make them like great conversations around the skill building and the student sense of self. Great. Good, good. That's so great to hear. Um, I mean, before we sign off, is there any other, you know, thoughts or any other advice to anybody that um, is listening to the webinar today that you'd give to them? Can I tell a quick story? Yeah, please. So this is my favorite basic story. And this is when it clicked and I was like, yes, this is awesome. So this happened my third year in my favorite basic card is tenacity, um, which is identifying a student that you may be sort of afraid to connect with, naming that fear and then going for it anyway. I work at an art, I working, working at an art school, there are a lot of introverts and um, students who, you know, were more reserved and that's totally great. And that, that resonated with our RAs too, who would sometimes be nervous about connecting with residents. So one of my quieter RAs picked a resident who had had a lot of challenges, was really struggling with mental health, like reluctant to engage with anyone in any way. Um, and went and had the most profoundly awkward conversation with this resident <laughs> at his door, like didn't make it past the threshold, but like checked in. And, you know, he was like, my RA was like, I don't know how well that went, but I did it. And like, I feel better having done it. And so that already felt awesome, like good for you. And then <laughs> the RA hosted a, a documentary screening about like fast fashion a few weeks later. And you're, you know where this is going. The only person who came to this program was the resident from the Tenacity card. And I think for me, that really supported what I already was feeling was really powerful about it. And I think solidified for him that like these seemingly inconsequential connections that you have like with your residents, like have such a huge profound impact on their experience. And so um, that's like my favorite nugget. <laughs> and I think really kind of just encapsulates like what basic can be and just like how powerful it can, it can really be for the students and for the RAs. Good, good. Thank you so much for sharing that. That makes, um, you know, that makes us feel great about implementing it and, um, and how, how great you're using it. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to share, share the, those great nuggets with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, I think we are almost out of time. So I'm going to turn it back over to Grant um, to see if there are any questions out there. And if we don't have time for those, uh, you will see our emails are up on the screen. You can feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to answer any and all questions that the audience members may have. Sounds good. Katie, can I get you to let me share back again? There we go. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Any questions from our attendees? Uh, probably the easiest way to send them is through the chat box. Uh, so if you click on all, send to all panelists and tuck them in there, um, I'm happy to make sure that our panelists get them and they can answer them for you. We'll just give you a couple seconds to submit those if you have anything. Hey, Grant, do, do you mind if I just ad address Julie's question here in the chat box? Of course. Yep. Yeah. So Ju Julie, thank you so much for the question. Um, you, you should be okay with one set of cards, um, you know, how we kind of structure it. And again, as Katie um, Kidwell had mentioned, it's up to you how you really want to facilitate the cards. But um, the way that we had envisioned it is that you pull a card um, every week during a staff meeting. Um, so the first set of challenge cards that you'll get in the standard um, package there should suffice for the year. Um, we decided to create the booster pack this uh, last year um, for uh, schools like MassArt and Katie who had been using it over and over again um, so we, to help create a little more variety. Hey, any other questions from our, our audience? Okay. 
Okay, I don't see any more. Uh, well, first and foremost, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, somebody did actually just ask um, if we will share this webinar, and yes, uh, we will have a copy of this webinar available in the next couple of days uh, via our Kuhoi library, and the link to it's there. You can also look for it off our main site. Um, if you click under the resources tab, um, you can log into our library. If you're a Kuhoi member, you just use your profile to log in, and the webinar will be posted there uh, so that you and or any of your colleagues who weren't able to join us today are able to view the webinar. Uh, we also post um, a future webinar and virtual roundtables on our website. Um, you can look for those under the important date section of our website landing page at akuho-i.org. Uh, well, I want to thank our three panelists, Katie, Katie, and Dee, for joining us today and for sharing uh, their really valuable perspective. Thank you to all of you. If you're looking to purchase BASIC or any components of BASIC, they're available, as I mentioned, off our website. If you go under um, our bookstore, and you can log in, you can purchase them directly from there. If you have any issues or questions, uh, you're welcome to call our Akuhawai main, uh, Central Office main line, which is area code 614 Two nine two zero zero nine nine, and we're open every day or most on business days uh, from eight thirty to five thirty Monday through Friday Eastern time. And you can call on our staff can help you there if you don't get your questions answered online. Um, but please uh, email the panelists if you have any questions. Feel free to email any member of the Akuhawai staff. We're happy to help you out with your purchases or any other questions. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us this afternoon, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Take care. <laughs>